It seems to me that we're in an historical period which is unique, and I don't know if it's my age or something else, but a great movement began in the late 17th, 18th century called the Enlightenment, during which it's never been perfected, but the ideas of democracy, of human emancipation, of human rights, of rationality and critical inquiry, of research that was not dominated by the church or any other ideological power, all of these ideas began to flourish and circulate and culminated in revolutions, in overthrows of various oppressions, slavery, uh, the vote for women, all kinds of advances. Now, never perfected, always in movement, but still something very important. And democracy was at the heart of this. And it seems to me that we are in a period where this is being radically called into question by the powers that be, the oligarchy, if you like, or you can call them the 1% of 1%, or you can call them the financial and corporate leadership, or whatever, the Davos class, as I have called them. But they are attacking democracy, which is too slow. Finance is fast, democracy is slow. You can't solve any problems for them with democracy. You have to allow those who are competent to rule, you have to allow them to rule. Um, human rights get in the way. There are lots of people who for them are completely useless. They don't produce, they don't consume enough to be of any interest to the economy. And there is a great movement also of exclusion. If people don't count, they're excluded, and sometimes entire countries are excluded. <coughs> and so, it seems to me that scholars have a task of understanding exactly how these strategies of our adversaries are perfected and disseminated and actually occupy the minds of a lot of people who do not benefit from them at all. First, we have to understand we have to realize that this is extremely complex, that uh, we have a task of research, which is difficult because research on the rich and powerful always is, and that we must then counter this with um, a basic principle, which again is democracy, and we have to try to explain how this can be, uh, how this can be motivated and implemented through any number of different channels which will renew the overthrow of oppression. We are suffering from great new kinds of oppression, financial, social, etc. And will lead to a new kind of human emancipation. That seems to me to be the task of radical intellectuals today.